What's going on guys, Tyraku here, and today we're gonna to be going over some tips, tricks, suggestions, advice, things that hopefully are kind of out of the box thinking. I have three I wanna go over real quick that are pretty common, but I couldn't list it as 13 tips and tricks because 13 is kind of a weird number to put as far as like a thumbnail and title, you know? So for YouTube, I had to do 10 because it just makes more sense. These three are pretty popular, pretty known, but I do want to mention them real quick. The other ones are, I tried to make a little bit more out of the box and hopefully you guys may not have thought about them, um, depending on obviously where you're at in the game. But the first one is not to use the incorrect rarity of books. Don't give legendary books to epic champions. Don't give epic books to epic champions. Rare books, use them on rare champions and uncommon champions if you really, really have to. But most uncommon champions, you can just use their duplicates to fully book them out. That's a very important tip. Don't do it. It's going to be a waste. You'll regret it later on. Save your Lego books for legendaries, epic books for epics, and rares for rare books. Rare books for rare champions. The next one is don't feed rare, epic, and legendary champions. Never feed a legendary champion. I see people on Reddit making jokes. Oh, I'm, I fed ninja. Ha ha ha. And then a few days later, oh crap, I fed ninja. I literally can never get him again. Or the same, same thing with uh, simple. Oh, I fed simple. Ha ha ha. I'm so funny. So edgy. So edgy on Reddit. Well, a few days later, I, I, I can't ever get simple again. I literally can't pull them from a shard, nothing. So while it may be a funny post to post on Reddit, it's not actually fun when you realize, hey, I'm missing out on a champion who I could throw in the guardian ring, I could throw in the faction guardians, I could empower, whatever it may be. There's better uses if you really wanna get rid of those champions. But as far as rares and epics go, don't feed them unless you know if they're good or not. If you have any questions, just search up on YouTube. Go to Twitch streamer, ask what's going on. The Reddit community, the, not the Reddit community. The Reddit community is good, but the raid community in general is very, very good. I think they're very helpful, so definitely ask around. And the last thing is the clan boss. If you get into a clan boss key, you start with a bad team. You don't like your team. Welcome to True. Um, we have a new clan member. Clan's pretty new. If you guys want to join, feel free. Just go here. Members, go ahead, search up Rockpile, TY2P, and join um, but if you mess up on your clan boss you can go ahead and force close the app just click just right click the game if you're on desktop close it if you're on mobile just force close it and it'll save your key it's a pretty nice tip especially if you mess up on your clan boss run but let's get into the 10 that i actually originally had planned out so the first thing which is the thumbnail of this video is don't farm minotaur anything honestly anything below stage 15 of minotaur is a waste of time minotaur stage 15 is very efficient and I definitely recommend you farming stage 15 on Minotaur, especially if you're free to play. I mean, free to play, this is the way to go. You can bring champions who are rank six, level one. Once you get a champion who can solo Minotaur, things become very, very nice. I literally have a video on my channel, Shield Guard Soloing Minotaur, if you guys wanna check it out. I'll try to link it up here. It's one of the more popular videos on my channel. But in that case, you're leveling a champion, you're getting experience, or you're leveling a few champions, you're getting experience, which is leveling a champion, you're getting silver, and you're getting Minotaur scrolls. It's so nice. But you can look at this list and see, hey, these, these early Minotaur stages don't give much scrolls at all. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen people come in here and start farming these lower stages of Minotaur just to realize, hey, I would rather go in here and just buy my masteries. Just literally go into the masteries, hit get all scrolls, and buy them for 800. The only reason why I would farm Minotaur anything below 15 is if I was working on progressing, I didn't feel like buying the masteries, and I wanted to get, say, the plus 5% crit rate. If I wanted to get one of these top two rows of masteries, I might do it in that case. But other than that, it's not worth your time because whether you have one scroll or every single scroll except for one, it's still going to cost 800 gems no matter what. And honestly, once you get to about three champions who have full masteries, level six, rank six, everything like that, full masteries, then you're going to be farming stage 15 of Minotaur pretty easily. Just bring those three champions, throw in one other champion, level one, rank six, get their masteries. It's going to be super, super easy. Plus, when you're doing Minotaur with champions who have all max masteries, it's like say you have four champions with max masteries and one champion without, all those Minotaur scrolls you're doing are gonna go to the champion who does not have any masteries currently, so it's a much better situation to be in. If you want more information, go watch the shield card video that I linked earlier. The next thing is don't rush your brews. So early game especially, you're gonna get what feels like quite a bit of, well, possibly quite a bit of brews, okay? So they come every now and then. I did use a code, a promo code SIMPLE, I believe, and I got like 20 brews on this free-to-play account, which is very, very nice. But be careful with them because the main thing that I use them for is whenever you take a champion, say say War Priest, if I wanted to upgrade her from rank three, level 30 to rank four, she's going to restart down to level one. Well, being level one and rank four, she's not going to do that good. 
So what I would want to do is save that brew for whenever I upgrade her, I can go ahead and give her a few brews, get her to say level 20 or level 30. This mostly applies to early game players because if you already have a rank six champion, already have a level 60, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. You can go ahead, use those as your campaign farmer and you don't really need brews. You can use them really however you want at that point. But early game, you do need to be careful because if you go ahead and spend all of your brews and then you're say Elaine, you're trying to progress through the campaign and then you realize crap, now I can't progress. I have to go all the way back to stage one of Karak Castle on normal to actually level my Elaine up to level 20 before I can start continuing progression on the campaign at stage six or even in hard or whatever it may be. It's just a, it's just a headache. So save your brews, use them wisely. Don't waste them. I mean, if you're going to be leveling Elaine in the campaign anyways, might as well leave her at say level 20. If she can kill the waves, no problem. Leave her there. Because another thing is, is that raids experience splits based on your team okay so you have 100 percent experience say you have two people on the team elaine's getting 50 percent and skull sworn's getting 50 percent energy well if elaine's max level she's getting 50 percent energy it's just going to the trash basically and skull sworn's getting the other 50 percent. so 50 percent is being wasted whereas if you have four champions each one's getting 25 percent, and then elaine at max level is only wasting 25 percent. so whenever you can obviously bring as many champions as you can but in this case if Elaine was max level, she'd be wasting 50% energy, but she's not, so she's all good. I don't want to harp on that subject too long. The next thing is saving your experience potions. Now, this applies to people below level 60. Level 60 is the maximum level you can get. At level 60, you have an energy cap, which is this right side number of 130. So you see here, 754 out of 72, which means I'm not regenerating any energy. If I get below 72, then I'll start regenerating energy every so often. Well, whenever you go in here to the potions, these potions refill based on this number on the right. Every time you level up, your number on the right, your max energy cap is going to go up a little bit. So every time you level, these potions are going to be a little bit more valuable to you. So ideally, you'll hold off using those until as late as possible. Obviously, if you're grinding through your energy, you're leveling up really, really quick, and you just need energy to continue playing, obviously go ahead and use it. But these weekly quests, for example, I don't need to claim this. I have four more days of doing completing all the rewards before I even need to do that. So until then, I'm just gonna let this sit right here. Hopefully by that point, I may have 100 energy up here. So that'd be an extra, what, 30, 40 energy that I'll be getting overall just by waiting to actually use that potion until then. Now, the energy you get from the shop, this energy right here, this doesn't matter. It just refills a thousand energy, but the potions only refill in your cap. So the higher level you are, the more value you're going to get for them. Obviously, don't let them expire. Use them before they expire. The next thing is saving your experience banners. It's kind of a similar thing. The experience banners, they do stack on top of each other. So I can go in here to my progression rewards. I can claim this and it'll be three days and six hours instead. On my main account, I have plenty of experience banners. I have 37 weeks of experience, which I spend money on this account, that account. This account, the free-to-play account, I'm not spending any money. Experience banners in the beginning will feel like they're coming left and right. You'll feel like you have them all the time, but they'll run out and eventually you'll be like, well, crap. Now I have to buy an experience banner because doing the campaign leveling without an experience banner is a terrible idea. Don't do it. Just not worth it. If you come in here to buy an experience banner, which you may have to do eventually, 140 gems. That's a couple energy refills instead. Definitely save your experience banners if at all possible. I have this three day one chilling in here. The only reason why this really matters is because maybe, maybe tomorrow you're going out with friends. If you had friends, maybe you're going out with your friends and you're not going to be playing raid. Well, if you have an experience banner chilling right here, it could be 24 hours before you play again. That's going to be a whole days of experience boost gone. So make sure you're careful about when you're using that. Ideally, save it for times where you know you're going to be active and you know you're going to be using energy and leveling and wanting that experience. The next thing is saving your shards for events and um, events like this and then summoning events. So in raid, we have 2x and 10x events. Typically, 2x events are better. Basically, 2x events gives you double the chance, which as a new player, you have double the chance on sacred shards of getting a legendary anyways. But say it's on voids, instead of an 8% chance and a 0.5% chance, I'm going to have a 16% chance at an epic and a 1% chance at a legendary. These rotate every so often. Follow a content creator, follow raids, any page, or just watch the portal and you'll know when these events go active. But ideally, it, like for me on my free to play account, I'm going to be saving my ancient shards until a two times event to get legendaries and epic champions from ancient shards. Epic champions 
are have a very high likelihood of being game changers for especially these early game accounts. The only reason why I would be pulling on a non two times event was if I leveled up my champions. I had no other champion I wanted to invest in. I really didn't have anything else for me to progress. Maybe then I would pull some shards to hopefully pull a champion who I could start investing my resources in and try to progress. But even if there was no two times event for ancient shards going on, I would definitely want to make sure there's a summon rush or a champion chase event going on if I was going to pull those ancient shards because even during these events, at least now, hey, I open up 100 ancient shards, I'm going to get some points to go ahead and pick up some experience brews, pick up some energy, pick up some gems, some charms, whatever it may be. I'll pick up some extra stuff as I'm summoning those shards. There's really no reason to open your shards anytime outside of one of those events, one of the tournaments, whatever it may be. Make sure there's something coinciding with when you're opening your shards just to really optimize your resources overall. Clarium does try to trick you every now and then, especially during CVC of giving like a 10 times event for a seemingly good champion. So be careful, be mindful, and watch out because it may be a trap. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is loading up on your faction guardian. So this is a very new thing to raid and something I'm super excited about. But the high elf champion, um, let's go ahead and see real quick what I was wanting to show you guys. High elves, we have Elaine. So Elaine, my starter champion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start farming once I get to Palace of Aravia, which I'll talk about this more as I do this. I'm going to start farming Eris as well as Avenger, okay? not I can't really pick who I'm farming, obviously, but as I'm doing these stages, farming the speed gear, because it's probably one of the better sets in the game, especially early on, you can't have too much speed gear, really. I'm gonna be farming this, I'm gonna be getting these rare champions, I'm gonna get duplicates of those, and instead of leveling those champions and feeding them, whatever it may be, I'm gonna come in here, put them in my faction guardians, and then once I have two copies of Eris, I'm going to get plus 10% HP on all my rare high elf champions. So Elaine, Eris, Avenger, Apothecary, Reliquary Tender, any high elf champion who's a rare rarity is going to get that 10% experience boost, 10% HP boost. And then if I get even more duplicates, ideally I have enough dupes to fill out the high elf rare champion fully. So then I'll get 10% attack plus seven accuracy, plus seven resistance, 10% defense, and plus three speed to all of my rare high elf champions, which is so, so nice, especially considering those rare champions are farmable. So it's very easy to fill this out. This will be a huge boost to many early game players and something I'm super excited to play around with and experience since last time I did a free to play, I didn't have that option available. The next thing I wanna talk about is using forge materials and doing your faction war. So early game, it may seem like insignificant, not very worth it to do these faction war low stages. But I have to tell you, even though you're getting one star glyphs, some of the one star glyphs, like the one star HP, one star attack, some of those may not be a huge deal. But one star speed glyphs are definitely a big deal because one star speed glyphs could be the difference between your, your clan boss team being speed tuned with the gear you have or your clan boss team being speed tuned off. Also, you can boost your Apothecary, your Hikatoon, whatever speed booster you're using, those plus one speed glyphs are gonna be so nice. Even the extra accuracy, anything like that is nice, but the other things are very, very good. The plus one speed is very, very nice and can definitely be the, a game changer. And I have found myself in many situations needing one extra speed. I didn't want the RNG of getting two extra speed from my plus two speed glyph or whatever it is. So and I didn't have any one star speed glyphs in my main account, so definitely farm these crypt stages, but even besides the glyphs, these forge materials are incredible. I don't actually have the forge open yet on this account. Let's jump over to my main account and the forge right here. As you're doing this, you're going to be gaining those materials like you'd seen. Um, they're going to be low star materials, but three to four star gear, um, three to four star perception gear is so nice. You need 10 of them. We have, um, what, 12 faction war keys a day to, to use. So you're going to be able to collect a decent amount of these materials, start forging some of these pieces of gear, which can give you three to four star pieces that have per the perception set plus 40 accuracy plus 5% speed, which are going to be some of the best pieces of gear you have for a while. So definitely do this, collect those resources, collect those materials. It's a very, very easy way to really expedite your gearing, expedite your overall progression as far as gearing and just in general in the game. The next thing is focusing too much and putting too much emphasis on sets, all right? So set bonuses are great, but here's a perfect example, Warpriest. She currently has two life sets on. She has five pieces of life gear. I could swap this pair of boots out for a pair of life boots, but I don't have any with speed on them. And I value speed on her more because I want her to go a little bit faster than Elaine so that she can give the increased attack to Elaine and help Elaine be stronger overall in each fight. 
especially in the arena. So make sure you're focusing on what the actual stats are. Some pieces of gear are just going to work out where it seems to make sense having sets. Like on a lane, I have three offense sets. It works out perfect. It makes sense. But sometimes you're going to have a really good piece of gear that may be in the curing set or maybe in a set that you think's terrible. Don't, don't stress too much about finding gears that match perfectly. Get the stats, and if the sets make sense, go for them. Now, some sets you do have to sacrifice a little bit for, and what I mean by that is like on the lifesteal set, okay? You may not have the perfect lifesteal gear, but the benefit you get from lifesteal may be worth it because unlike some of these sets where it gives you plus 40 accuracy, plus 12% crit rate, those you can earn from gear, but lifesteal, you can't actually earn the lifesteal benefit from gear. So lifesteal benefit is heals by 30% of damage dealt. You can't earn that from gear. So these sets that have a certain effect, you may need to sacrifice a few stats to actually complete that set, but still, Make sure you're going for the stats you want and then put the sets behind that. I have plenty of champions on my account right here who don't have complete sets. So right here, we have only one shield set, four piece. I could have a, another set here, but these two pieces are so good that, hey, I'm not gonna complete that set. There's a lot of champions throughout my account who do not have full set pieces, fully decked out and matching sets. So don't worry about matching. This is not Sims. You don't have to match all your stuff perfectly, okay? We're not dressing up to go out here. We're dressing up to kill some dungeon bosses and campaign bosses. Um, the next thing is make sure you ascend your champions. Yesterday on stream, I was talking with somebody and they did not ascend Alexander yet. Apparently Alexander, once you ascend him, I guess to three stars, he actually unlocks his aura, which is significant, especially for a new player. 60 accuracy in all battles is very, very nice. Some champions, when you ascend them, they're going to unlock auras. They're gonna unlock different skills. Different champions have different ascension benefits, but every champion is going to at least get some increase into basic stats. So this is something you 100% wanna do. The stat boost may seem insignificant, but any stat boost, especially early on, is incredible. Right here, look, we have a ascended version of our um, A2 or A3 ability right there. Definitely worth it, right? So go ahead, make sure you're sending all your champions. If anything has like an ascension bonus, it's gonna have this little exclamation point by it. So make sure you're doing that. It's gonna help you out a ton. Sometimes it's something that can possibly be overlooked, but it's something you wanna make sure you're doing. Make sure you're spending the time to actually do, because some champions, you may not know it, but they actually have an aura hidden behind that ascension, and it'll show. It'll be like, um, I can't give an example right now, but it'll be grayed out. So like if you go look at the champion, if they have an aura, which is something like this, it'll be grayed out and it'll say it needs to be ascended. So look at the champion, see what it is. Typically it's three stars ascension, but some champions also get a base speed boost when they're fully ascended. Like I think Gorgrab is one who gets quite a few base speed actually increased. There's a few different champions like that. Make sure you're sending your champions. Some get the benefit at plus at six star ascension and some at three star ascension. So keep an eye on that. It is something you definitely wanna do. And obviously make sure you're farming your ascension potions from these as they're opened. The next thing is focusing on missions and challenges. This is gonna be the last tip, but this is super important. Some of these challenges seem obnoxious. Some of them seem annoying, but they're much better to do now versus later on down the road. So winning a three-star weapon from clearing stage one of Sewers of Arnok, that's pretty easy. But then we all know the daggone mission that is like get a three-star glove with attack percentage is the main stat from Sewers of Arnok. That takes so long. But when you're doing that, you're gonna get Skull Swarms. You're gonna get those rare champions who you can use to rank up your other champions. You can level up the Skull Swarms. You can level up whoever it is as you're going through. So you're still gonna be getting experience. You're still gonna be having a chance to get rare champions from doing this. So it's still worth the time. And I can promise you this, it is so much easier to do it. It's so much, I guess, more efficient to do it now versus two months down the road when you're max level. And then going back to Sewers of, sewers of Arnok on normal is just, you would never do that. You have no reason to do that. It's much better now when these re these rewards for doing the challenges are actually impactful. Like later in the game, this rare book's not going to do that much. But right now, that rare book can be really, really nice for me, and I really want that. So definitely make sure you do them now versus later on. The earlier you do them, the better. Even if you're a few weeks into the game, go ahead and do them because these later on rewards get better and better. But you got to get these earlier stages, stage rewards before you get those better ones. So hopefully, guys, something in those tips you found useful. Hopefully you found something valuable there. Hopefully it all made sense. Thank you all very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. Maybe not concerns. I don't know about that one. Um, but 
Either way, guys, thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one.